We welcome you to worship at Hudson Memorial Presbyterian Church. I'm out in Johnston County on a farm with one of my neighbors who has an off-leash dog hiking company. A few announcements before we begin worship. First of all, this is the last Sunday that we'll have outdoor worship through the month of February. We'll begin again in March uh, to do outdoor worship and have RSVPs for that. We worship this Sunday with all the creatures we love. We join the psalmists and rejoice with all living things. We sing with all the birds. We bark with all the dogs. We meow with all the cats and animals that make our lives richer because of their presence. Let us move from getting here to being here for worship. Let us be called to worship. Jesus Christ, we assemble with all of your creatures in this circle of life. We ask you to join our circle and celebrate with us as we join in celebration with you and with all creation. We ask for your blessing, your shalom on the creatures present here that we love and on all creatures celebrating in the wild. In the name of God who creates all life, in the name of Jesus Christ, who redeems all life, and in the name of the Spirit, who renews all life, we cry with all in the circle of life, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. May your blessing come.
Good morning. Thanks for joining me today. Well, today we're going to talk about animals and specifically our pets. This sleepy little girl here is Stella. She's been in our family since last January and um, she's a mutt that came from um, a rescue society here in Raleigh and we love her. She's part of the family. Um, Let's think about what sort of things animals need. So this is Stella's collar. It has a phone number on it in case she runs off. People can give us a call. Um, she likes to explore sometimes and chase rabbits in the neighbor's yard. So that's really handy. Um, we also have this bed. I don't know if you can see this bed that she's resting on. Dogs have to have a bed to be cozy. And she has her own little blanket here. Um, dogs need fresh water and food. She loves her food and a good dish. Dogs need a treat once in a while, right? So let's see, Stella, Stella likes her little peanut butter bones. She, yep. she loves it. Uh, let's see, dogs need to be walked. So here's her leash, fits onto her collar. You probably know what these are for if you have an animal, but dogs take a lot of care and let's think about some of the other animals. Some people might have cats. Cats may be a little bit easier, but you have to um, take care of them and feed them. And you might have a litter box you might be responsible for taking care of at home. Uh, if you have a bird, they have feed and um, different things for their, for their cages. So there's a lot of things that we have to do to take care of pets. So why do we have pets in the first place? Well, in Genesis, uh, before God even made man, he made animals. He made the birds of the air and the fish in the sea. He made um, cows and every animal on earth. Those were made, and God said at the end of the day, he knew that it was good. The next day, he made man and women, men and women in, their, in his own image, to rule over those animals. So to rule over the animals, what does that mean? Well, it means we have to care for them. Animals give us life. And they also give us great companionship. I know at the beginning of um, this past year, when people were having to stay home a lot with a sickness, animals became very important. And if you walk around town, you see animals being walked everywhere and more and more people have pets. Well, um, God says uh, through the Bible in Psalm 148, it says that all the birds of the air and the creatures of the sea and the wild animals, may they all praise God. And in 150, it also says, may everything that has breath praise the Lord. So God is relying on us to take care of our animals, to take care of the environment so that we can care for um, the animals that might not be in our house or domesticated. Um, so it's really important that we 
cherish these relationships we have. They give us so much peace and comfort, and we thank God for them, especially today. Let's, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for giving these animals to us and trusting us to care for them. The things that we provide for them are, are, aren't much in comparison to the love that they give us back unconditionally. We thank you for reflecting your love to us through our pets and through this beautiful world and nature you've created for us. Please help us to take care of it. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us come to God in confession. Lord, for all of the animals in the whole world, we thank you, God. Lord, for all of the fun and friendship we have with animals, we thank you. Lord, for all of the times we have hurt or neglected animals. Lord, for all of the times we have destroyed the homes of animals in the forest, oceans, and fields, we are sorry. Accept our repentance, O oh God. Amen. Friends, in our confession, we have accepted God's grace, and we can be assured that in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to our merciful God. And now, as we have confessed our sin, and we have received God's pardon, we share the peace of Christ with one another, and as we do so, we commit ourselves to peacemaking in all aspects of our lives. We commit ourselves to making peace with our human friends, our animal friends, and indeed the earth itself. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray. God, our creator, help us to love all creatures as our kin, all animals as our partners on earth, all birds as messengers of praise, all small beings as expressions of your mysterious design, all frogs as voices of hope. May your word transform us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Listen for the Spirit's movement in these words. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our scripture from Revelation has an image that I want us to hang on to. It is a dreamlike vision of the prophetic author, John. A picture of the throne of God. And yes, there are angels surrounding the throne. We're also told that human elders are there, but also among this vision are living creatures. We're told the crowd together is myriads of myriads, thousands of thousands, and there's lots of singing going on, praising of God happening. Can't you hear it? The singing voice of a human and angels along with chirping birds roaring lions, meowing cats, neighing horses, and hooting owls. It is truly creation declaring the glory of God. 
Yes, we get this image of the reign of God from Revelation, but versions of it can be found elsewhere in the Bible. Ezekiel, for example. Other God-induced dreams where it is not just humans in some sort of realm of God, but all of creation, all the living parts of creation declaring God's glory. A great image for us on this day when we celebrate our domestic pets. Whatever our future is with God, it isn't us sitting on boring clouds alone. But the visions of our prophetic ancestors have heaven and earth during the reign of God filled with all of God's creatures. Our scriptures are filled with references to animals, cows, donkeys, ox, ants, badgers, locusts, snakes, deer, sheep, rams, dogs, eagles, fish, and more. In Genesis, the animals are created as kin and partners to humans, made from the same ground as human beings. In Psalm 148, all creatures are called to praise God. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we are told Solomon in all his royal splendor cannot match the brilliance of the creatures of the land and sky that God creates and feeds. Today in worship, we give thanks and praise for the animals in our lives. Words are not sufficient for the ways many of your pets in your homes have touched your lives particularly in the isolation of this past year. In this season, when we are trying to overcome our cultural divisions and the pain of the pandemic, our nonpartisan animals provide some of the initial healing touches that we so desperately need. We receive grace from them, and unconsciously, they nudge us to be merciful to our fellow human beings and all of creation. Yes, maybe God uses our pets most of all to make us better human beings. As I've mentioned earlier in this worship service, one of my favorite neighbors has this dog hiking business, off-leash dog hiking business. But that description is just too tame. One of her clients has this farm that I'm on, and on multiple days each week, she piles anywhere from five to 10 dogs in her sprinter van and takes the dog for freedom on the farm. Our dog Lawson goes about once a month and thinks it's the best thing ever. He runs, he gets his smells on, he swims, he plays. Because our neighbor spends so much time with so many people's dogs, I asked her where she sees God in all these dogs she takes care of. She had these wonderful things to say. She says, it's super remarkable that you can make the worst mistakes as humans and these dogs still love you. They allow space and grace to become more of a loving person, she says, and that extends into my human relationships. She says that for uh, her, the safest emotional places are with animals. Animals encourage you to be fully present, and the dogs have made her a better person. In a moment, we'll have a chance to bless our animals. Our human-centric view of faith might frown on this act, but make no mistake, in my more holistic view of God's creative work, I don't think that this should be frowned on at all. One resource on animal blessing says this, in the scriptures, the act of blessing means the imparting of the power of life. The person performing a blessing is mediating the power from God or Christ to the person or animal involved. To bless is more than an expression of goodwill and caring. To bless is to impart God's power in person. The blessing of each animal by name 
means that health and life are being mediated from God for the benefit of the animal in its relationship with its human partners. Shalom is one Hebrew expression of blessing. We all need healing at one time or another. One of the things that we affirm as Christians is that Christ conquered death and is alive. We hope in this living Christ in our pain-filled world. Do you believe that the Spirit of God is working in the world through Christ to fill and heal creation? I do. The animals in our lives are some of the teachers and healers God has provided in the world. Thanks be to God for their presence in our lives. Amen. So when you do your blessing with your pet, here's some words you can use. Let's shake it out. Lawson, may the power of this blessing from Christ fill you with life, bind you to your human partners, and lead you to praise your creator. Amen.
All dogs and cats, large and small, praise the Lord. Rabbits, hamsters, and guinea pigs praise the Lord. Goldfish, guppies, and swimming creatures praise the Lord. All robins and wrens and singing birds praise the Lord. Bats and squirrels and raccoons praise the Lord. Horses and cows and sheep praise the Lord. Lizards and snakes and creeping things praise the Lord. Every animal in the sky and sea and forest praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Stand firm in your faith. Let all you do be done in love. And may you know God's smile and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Amen. Bam Bam, this is Bam Bam, the newest member of the Cummins family. Seven-month-old puppy.